Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Devin Townsend Project, Transcendence, the newest album from Devin Townsend. Um, so yeah, a few weeks after it actually came out, we were intending to do it sort of like the day after, but we were completely wiped. Uh, totally not because we were, you know, drinking booze and playing Dungeons Dragons. Well, to be fair, I got the album on the day, and we were planning to do it the day after, but it's sort of like, oh god, too many things at once. <laughs> Which is surprising, because, you know, as you know, Ed need, needs Devin Townsend to live, so I'm surprised he didn't just die. <laughs> well, we did listen to the album, at least. If we hadn't listened to the album, then I would have died. <laughs> I didn't just take the disc out and just, like, slice it into thin strips and snort it. But then I couldn't listen to it afterwards. You can listen to it in your inside your veins. I mean, say my MP3 player goes wrong, which it has on more than one occasion, then I've got my CD player as backup. This is true. I'm sad that my CD player that I had in like 17 years ago finally died. But no, the thing was like nearly as old as I was. And it was working so well until really recently. It's been it's been to multiple countries with me. RIP. I think my CD player. It's about 11 years old, give or take. Um, but anyway, to the album. Um, uh, this is a bit of an interesting one for various reasons. First off, you've got the matter that if I... Um, let me just check. Um, yeah, it is the first Devin Townsend al album not to be produced solely by Townsend. Funnily enough, it features a periphery member, Adam Nolly Gitgood. Yes, his surname is Gitgood. I'm assuming that must be a stage name. Yeah, because that's a pretty impressive surname, if not. As additional producer, engineer, and mixer. Um, it also has greater input on songs, arrangements, and production than the rest of any of the previous albums. Um, just so people are aware, this episode will be a bit different because we're just going to be covering highlights from the album instead of going song by song because we're trying to pare down episode lengths so people can find them more manageable. We will see how this goes, and if people request for longer episodes again, we'll go back to that format. And depending on things, we might do both formats. Just in case, you know, we can do a quick format if anyone's interested, and then possibly have like a, a side set of a more in-depth thing for people who want opinions on certain songs or whatever. Yeah. Um, now, a few background pieces. I mean... I already did a mini-review of Failure, and as people are aware, I absolutely love that song. Um, both of us are pretty much of the opinion that, that that is one of the strongest songs on the album. It is. I mean, I heard it's the only song I actually heard before the album came out, because obviously I released a bunch of them beforehand, but Failure was the only one I actually listened to, and I would still say it's probably one of the best songs on the album, if not the best. Hmm. Interestingly enough, the songs that we find the best ones on the album are the ones that are collaborative efforts. Which is kind of strange, because collaborative efforts is always kind of a mixed bag, you don't know what exactly you're getting. Mm. But I mean, Stormbending, Failure, Secret Sciences, Higher, From the Heart, and Transcendence are collaborative efforts. You just have so many collaborative efforts. Mm. So I think like half the album or so, essentially. Yeah. I mean, the only one that's a collaborative effort, lyrics-wise, is From the Heart, but the rest of the songs are collaboratively written, sort of musically, production, all that sort of thing. Hmm. But it's safe to say that after a couple of listens through, it's definitely Devin Townsend still. Yeah. You don't need to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just, it feels like a natural progression from the previous stuff he's done. 
Hmm. It's very much kind of it's keeping you in the same kind of you know, style and structure that you can kind of expect from him. There's a couple of little bits here and there that make you think, oh, that's new. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I definitely had that with Offer Your Light. Hmm. It's like a kind of weird kind of synthy intro. Yeah. I, I, when when that came up, I was sort of like, okay. It kind of has a bit of a J-Rock feel to it. I'm not sure what to make. I have actually seen a couple of people say it reminds them a lot of Baby Metal. Yeah. I, I was Can getting I that feel. <laughs> <laughs> but as people know, I no longer absolutely hate Baby Metal. So... <laughs> yep, that's a good sign. The thing is, they've always had the, the huge hits here and there that have been legitimately really quite interesting and good. And this, to, if it is this actually drawing for them, if no Devon, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, this is drawing in the better parts of them as well. It's only very slight influence, but it's definitely something there that's coming from somewhere around that area, I reckon. Mm. Of course, whilst there is plenty of good to comment on, there are a few bits that make me go, hmm, not sure about this. Um, I mean, from the heart, I do like, but there are a few bits that kind of are a bit slow for me. Interestingly enough, I think, uh, well, all the from the heart, the bit I actually like the best is the instrumental part at the end of it. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. It's so the last third or so is completely instrumental, and it's really, really nice. Yeah, whereas certain lyrical bits feel a bit meandering and... It feels like it needs to be a bit punchier. Hmm. No, actually, well, one thing it did kind of remind me of Ashley is that kind of instrumental part at the end reminded me a little of the third segment of Anesthetize by Pocket Pantry. It had the same kind of feeling. That song, that, that song is you know, 17 minutes long and essentially kind of split into three parts that all sound, have, have distinctive sounds. Hmm. But the final part of it is kind of weird, kind of meandering, instrumental, mostly instrumental anyway. Kind of ambient kind of feel to it, and you makes me think of that quite a bit. I have to give that a listen. I did recently download Porcupine Tree's di- diography, discography. <laughs> it's one of the albums I've got, so I really know. I mean, overall, it's a very strong album, with the exception of the last song for me. Well, I would probably agree with that. I mean, the last song is a cover, and covers always have the potential to they kind of somehow meld in. Or just not. <laughs> yeah. And quite often it's going to get a. I mean, as I mentioned to you before, Ed, about the only one draconian song I think like is a cover song. Mm. So it kind of goes. We can kind of they have the same kind of style and structure of the band that's covering, but the kind of the influence in the original source is enough to make it sound quite a bit different and sometimes be quite jarring. Yeah. I mean, Transdermal Celebration, which is the final song. Originally by Ween, who I can take or leave. I am familiar with them, and eh. Um, I listened to the original, and I can pretty much say that the only way they could have really made it an interesting song for me is if they'd given it, if Devin had given it the Northern Kings treatment. <laughs> You know, so radically change it to a point where it's almost unrecognisable as the original. I would not have. Yeah, it would not have been an unwelcome affectation, but that's not really Devin Townsend style. Uh, I just find Transdermal Celebration boring. I I don't. It's not like when we reviewed. Um, is it Far Upon the Water? Uh, Fire on the Water. Yeah. And Pierce went on to his massive diatribe about Believe. Um, yes. Did not like that one. Yeah. It's... No... I can go through any number of bands. It's not like any number of the songs on Saint Anger or Chinese Democracy. It's not... Um, for some people... Um, they really hate Risk by Megadeth. I'm one of the rare few who actually enjoys that album, but I do understand why people hate it. It's not that sort of situation. It's just... I find it boring. Personally, I don't really mind it that much, but the extremely minimalist ambient in the last two minutes or so just don't do anything for me. Mm. I've had songs like that before that it makes it work. 
But in this case, it's just it's a bit too minimalist, I guess. It just sounds like static. Well, he, here's the thing. It's five minutes longer than the original. There's a good portion of that is actually you know, new material. It's only like the last two minutes that is at that kind of ambient. Mm. Absence of anything. Yeah. But, yeah, regardless of length, I find it a boring song, generally speaking. So... With that said, this is where we get into the changing songs in and out, um, because there is a B-sides disc for this particular album. Um, loads of demos and um, one one original song. The first song on the disc, called Gump, which isn't a cover, I was actually... I was sort of like... I know what Devon Townsend is like. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a cover of Gump by... Oh. Who was the band who di- originally did Gump? It was a band. Um... <laughs> this has been Weird Al. Uh, no, I'm... <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. That's where it's getting confused. No, the original is Lump. But I wouldn't have put it past Devin Townsend to actually do a cover of Gump by Weird Al. No, I never put it past me either myself. But, um, another thing uh, worth interesting... Worth interesting? What am I saying? Worth mentioning, even. There's a amount of songs in this album that do kind of flow directly into the next one. Yeah. I mean, there's Truth in Store Bending, uh, Off Your Light and From the Heart both do it a lot as well. Mm. There's a case of just... It's, it's a very unnoticeable kind of shift there. Yeah. And unlike some albums where you have those sorts of shifts and you're sort of like, wait, the song changed? I, I wasn't paying attention like we had with Periphery and some of the songs on that album were just sort of like, oh dear god I I didn't even notice in this case it actually works really well, partly because of the concept behind the album because Devin Townsend's albums, well Devin Townsend Project to be exact they aren't concept albums in the typical sense of actually telling a story they are concept albums in the most literal sense of weaving concepts and Transcendence is another one probably the reason why they picked Transdermal Celebration as a song to cover for it um, but yeah if, if I was sorting out the tracks I would have put Transdermal Celebration on the B-side switched it out for Gump and then switched out f- switched around from the heart and Gump but it is I mean as I said the transition between Off Your Light and From the Heart is very strong there so so maybe put Gump after Transcendence. That could work, yeah. Um, I'll send you the song so you get an idea of what I'm on about, but suffice to say, Gump feels more appropriate. Transdermal Celebration, take or leave. Here it is. Um, I think also you mentioned Failure is one of the best ones here, but I'd say otherwise, other than that, Transcendence itself is probably one of my other favourite songs on the album. Hmm. I really like Transcendence. It definitely feels... Yeah. Transcendent? Yeah, it does actually feel like it's encapsulating the concept of Transcendence. Since it's got a very accurate title to how it sounds, so it's, just, it's often quite hard to do. Mm. It's a very kind of swelling sound to it. Yeah. I really like Transcendence. For me, personal favourites, it's between Failure and Secret Sciences. Um, ma- is good, yes. mainly because Secret Sciences has very much you know, as we've said in previous episodes, the whole building and building until finally exploding. That's what I really like about Higher actually as well, because Higher kind of starts out, you think, oh it's kind of relatively basic metal, a bit kind of bordering on kind of pop metal I guess at some point. Yeah. Not as much as I'm that. But then just the more it gets into it, the more stuff comes in and just kind of just breaks and just goes into being really quite heavy. Hmm. Adding more parts to it. So, yeah. Um, but Secret Sciences, it has this very effective. It builds up and builds up and finally explodes. Then it cools down again before exploding again. <laughs> um, oh, got to tell a funny story about that actually. When we were very first listening to the album, um, my mum was in the kitchen and she couldn't hear it clearly and she was just picking up on the one choral lyric of let it go and she came in asking if it was a metal cover of let it go from frozen 
<laughs> the songs do not sound similar in the slightest. It was just... It was just that one line that made her ask that, and it was one of those... What? How? What? How? How did you hear it as that? <laughs> well, the thing that is actually quite interesting is the fact that somehow, despite the intro to it off your light, it just somehow works coming after one sentence. Hmm. Because one sentence kind of just builds up and builds up and builds up, and it kind of ascends. As you can expect from a title like that. And it just stops and goes straight into the synth opening off your light, and then it's like, ah, oh, break, something just exploding. Oh, just going to go over some of the personnel, because when you know who the personnel are, you'll probably go, oh yeah. So, as per usual, we've got Anek van Giersbergen. They're quite often collaborative. Oh, they've been, collab- they've been collaborating right from the start very first project album possibly even before um Shay Ami Dorval uh let me just um I just need to check which album ah uh, yeah she was the female vocalist on Casualties of Cool oh, um Katrina Natal uh, um, ah she was um, additional vocals on Ghost. Ah, okay. Um, orchestrations by Niels by Nielsen. <laughs> I do. Let's see if I can... Um, okay. Well, nerds will know him as one of the musicians for Ratchet and Clank, going commando. Ah, fair enough. That is a really weird connection. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, composers Niels by Nielsen, additional music. Okay. And also um, The Ultra Zone by Steve Vai. Oh, okay then. Yeah, I've heard that album. It's a pretty good album. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he did orchestration for Lucky Charms. Uh huh. It isn't that album again, it's been quite a while. But I remember it being a pretty good album, so. Uh, and Matthias Eklund. Um, that is not who I'm looking for. <laughs> Fucking Eklund. Um, he seems to be an ambience provider for a few bands. Uh, one, the most immediate one is a Swedish power metal band called Persuader. Not someone I'm familiar with. Mm. Um, and album called Grand Illusion by Nocturnal Rights. Nocturnal Rights is a name I've heard, but I've never listened to them, so... This is going to be a case of, because of the connections, we're going to look up a ridiculous amount of albums, aren't we? <laughs> Me will have them. Not necessarily a problem. Um, More music is always nice. Looks like he also worked with Mickey D of the Scorpions. Um, as all, you've also got the usual choir that he's been employing for quite a few things. Um, symphony orchestrated and programmed by Niels by Nielsen. Uh, choir and choral parts conducted by Eric Severinsen. Severinsen? Huh? Oh, isn't that that's kind of familiar as well? Let's see... No, I did not mean that, otherwise I would have typed that in, you stupid cunt! <laughs> um... Z2... He did orchestration for Z2... Um... Ten Ways? What? Uh, ten Ways from Sunday? That name mean ev- anything to you? That name means literally nothing to me. You're more interested in having a name that sounds similar to something else that I just think. Oh, that sounds familiar. Does it not to be familiar at all? Hmm. Easily done. I mean, there's Eric Severson. Oh, I don't. That would mean anything. Uh, I don't know. But there's a lot of various guest works on this. Um, I have to say, the art is quite a bit different from previous albums. It is, but it's also pretty damn cool. Yeah. I think in looking at some of the other um, artworks, like, say, Deconstruction, for example. Mm. 
Actually, let's have a look. Because it does have a similar sort of feel. I mean, different Tented Artwork's always been kind of different between albums anyway. Yeah. Um... This again might also be the same artist as the one that did the art for Z2. Mm -hmm. I can check that right now, seeing as the album's right next. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. So we are looking for Anthony Clarkson. Oh, I never realised that. The in sleeve, you can actually turn it upside down. Fair enough, is there anything else on it? No, uh, it's because it's a double album. Ah, uh, What? So I just think Clarkson and Google and just get former selling, former court selling fake free eggs get longer prison sentence than sex offender. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we can Google. Um. God, there's so much fucking writing. <laughs> yep, I'm looking, well, looking up Anthony Clarkson on Google. I'm seeing both the deconstruction covers and transcendence cover. So I'm assuming it probably is the same artist. I don't think. It, no, it's not the same artist for Z2. It is, but those two appear to be the same ones. Mm. Also appears to have worked for some other bands, well, like Serenia. Sorry? It appears to have for a few other bands, well, like Serenia. Mm. Serenia, what the hell the hell are you well, That's why it's there's so much writing on the credits page. It's literally both albums credits. <laughs> have like 50 uh, people that worked across all of these albums. Hmm. Probably more, knowing Devin. Winter by then. Not in any way suggesting that he has a lack of talent or anything, it's just... He has this strange knack for just calling on EVERYONE! I feel like working with 16,000 people twice. Well, that was the Universal Choir. <laughs> that was kind of what I was getting at. The number was completely random, but I remember it being pretty big. Mm. Well, it was thousands. It actually says in the in sleeve. Nice. Um, yeah. Overall, I'd say great album, but Devin has done better. Yeah, I would agree. Not his best album, but it's certainly a solid album, and there's some really sweet stuff in there. Mm. All around, it's more good than bad, that's for sure. Mm. Well, there's one song that I don't care for, and it's a meh. Response. It's a meh and the cover song. Yeah. It's all when when the non positive response to a song is meh and it's only one song. I think we've got a pretty solid album. Yep. Um I would say this album gets four transcendental meditations out of five. I would say this would yeah, I'll probably get a 4 out of 5 as well. 4 divs went down to out of 5. <laughs> Just because of that fucking flub? Yeah, you flubbed it earlier. Into divs went down to end something. I always flub the beginnings! <laughs> every time! Anyway. So that's what's called once more with three links is because every single time we do it, we have to do it at least once more. Hey, you've heard, you remember the first episode. We I, I pulled that title pretty... Well, it was sort of like, uh, hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, I guess we're calling it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and now the name's stuck and now it's difficult to find us because of the fucking Joss Whedon. Fuck you, Joss Whedon, I love you, but fuck you! Why do you have to title that Buffy episode, most common phrase in musical theatre, Once More With Feeling? <laughs> Well, to be fair, we also named our program after an episode after the most common theme with music theatre. Yeah, but at least we actually have reason. <laughs> no, this is this is the th this is the future we chose. Oh uh, well, at least we we're starting to pick up steam, so. Indeed, maybe we can eventually we pick up enough steam to have a name that isn't forgotten. Well, we've got names for our other shows. So, one way or another, we can be found. It's incredibly sinister, you know. Only you would find it sinister to put it like that. If I ever find out what videos you're making, I will find them, and I will watch them. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, that has been our review of Desmond Townsend. Uh, <laughs>
Fuck you. <laughs> anyway, it's goodbye from me. Yeah, it's goodbye from me.